welcome to the Dental Team Podcast. I'm your host, Kara Dent, and I have this crazy idea that maybe I could combine a doctor and a team member's perspective, because let's face it, dentistry can be a challenging profession with those two perspectives. I've been a dental assistant, treatment coordinator, scheduler, filler, office manager, regional manager, practice owner, and I have a team of traveling consultants where we have traveled to over 165 different offices coaching teams. Yep, we don't just understand you, we are you. Our mission is to positively impact the world of dental, and I believe that this podcast is the greatest way I can help elevate teams, grow VIP experiences, reduce stress, and create a team. Welcome to the Dental A-Team Podcast. Hello, Dental A-Team listeners. This is Kira, and you guys, you are in for the best treat of your life, consultant takeover. That's right. Get ready. They are dropping some dynamite. Our consulting team is incredible, guys, and we are so blessed and so fortunate to have them sharing tips and tricks with you today. And as always, thanks for listening. I'll catch you next time on the Dental Team Podcast. I am so excited to be here with one of my all-time favorite um, consultants, admin members, and hygienists. I think, <laughs> Britt, I love podcasting with you. I say it every time. I feel like we bust out so much in um, a very short amount of time. So I'm excited to do that with you today. We've got a couple things to chat about. Uh, welcome. Thank you for being here with me. I mean, thanks for having me. I always love getting to podcast with you too. We say it all the time. Like, I feel like this is the time we actually get to hang out with each other. So I know. I know. I podcasted with da- with Danae and she was in Arizona, you know, for a few weeks, but I was gone most of the time she was there. And so I was like, it. I didn't get to see her. I was like, add it to Brit's, you know, forte. We live 20 minutes apart and don't see each other. So that's fine. I mean, it's guys, my schedule. We like each other for a virtual company. <laughs> I tell you, we connect real well. Maybe not we do. all the time, but virtually we do a real good job. <laughs> we do. We do. My favorite thing is that um, I get to tell all of my clients and my friends and my family and everybody that we have every morning at 9 a.m. Pacific a morning huddle. And it's so cool. I know we're not talking about morning huddles today, but I think it's really cool because we preach morning huddles to businesses all the time. And I think it's awesome to be able to see that like business is business and what works in a dental practice can, we can duplicate and translate that to multiple business structures. We do it for our own. Um, And my practices get to see that it works for us. So like you can implement and work it into your business as well. So it's just really cool. And that is how we stay so connected, I think, as a virtual company, I think that's one of the best things that we've implemented. Obviously, our weekly meetings, things like that, we do a lot of the same things, you guys, that we tell you to do. Uh, but it really, really helps keep us connected. So I love it. Every morning, I get to see your face. And then when we podcast, you get to see your face as well. So I love it. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's all for the sake of like keeping us on the same page, right? Mm-hmm. Like our communication point, we're all on the same page and we to be moving forward. Um, so it helps. And that's like guys, systems and things that we do, like we do practice what we preach. So we do, we do, which I love. I love, I love being able to go into my practices and be like, I know this works because I do it all the time. So it's super cool. So another thing that I've been, um, talking to a lot of practices about, especially right now, because I think, um, this time of year, we're really prepping for hygiene, right? Because, We've got September coming up uh, not too far from now, and everybody knows what September looks like. But I think this is a really good time to make sure that we have all of those protocols and procedures in place. And summertime, to me, summertime is a great space of life for most practices, not my pedo practices. <laughs> They're a little psychotic right now in my oral surgery practices. Yeah, my, my specialty practices are going a little buck wild crazy right now. But my GP practices, they they tend to see a little bit of a slowdown or, or some more vacation times, kind of things like that. Doctors are going on vacation. Admin teams are looking for things to do. Um, hygienists are looking for things to do. So I think this is a really great time to really take a look at systems, protocols, and figure out what do we need the rest of this year to look like. What are those protocols? I've been working really heavily with a lot of my practices right now are perio protocols and really kind of figuring out what are my expectations of my hygiene team and my hygiene department so that they know how to calibrate what they're doing and they know what what it looks like to win. Like, you know how to do your job. I'm not here, you know, a doctor's not here to tell you how to do your job, but I'm here to tell you how can you be successful and feel like you're winning in your position within that practice. And I think to me, that's what the perio protocols really boil down to. It's not a, 
I don't, I don't, and maybe I'm wrong, Britt, you're the hygienist here. Like, I don't think it's like everyone who has this number has to be this category. Like, I think it's very patient dependent and I trust my hygiene team and my hygienist to make those decisions, but we need guiding, guiding tools so that not everybody's like one, one hygienist says something, another hygienist is like totally off base with that thing. Like, how do you feel the perio protocols really do services in, in practices? Yeah. And I think it's those standards, like this is our preparation time of getting these protocols in place, our preparation time so that when you are going buck wild, it doesn't feel so wild. Yeah. Uh, And we know what to do. We're all on the same page and it's really nice and clear. One of the biggest helps I think period protocols like give us for a hygiene department is it allows us to like all move forward with confidence and be on the same page. Mm-hmm. Um, and also make sure that our standard of care is consistent for every mm-hmm. single patient. It helps for me as a hygienist, having periodontal protocol in place helps me so that it holds me accountable. So I kind of like, don't start to waver too. on like, well, for like, sure. I don't want to have that conversation today. Like, yeah, this one can slide. Like it holds <laughs> me accountable to like what actually needs to happen. And especially when you work on a hygiene team, I, most of my hygiene career clinical, I was working with hygienists up to like six was the most we had in one office. Wow. And I tell you, right. When we've got that many hygienists, if I'm seeing a patient, someone else is seeing, and I'm like, Oh, what were they doing last time? Did they <laughs> do this last time. And now I get to deal with it. Period protocol is huge because then it's the yeah. same standard for across all hygienists. We're not kind of like passing the buck to someone else to deal with it later. And we're ensuring our patients have the same standard of care. And like for doctors too, I think it allows doctors when we've got that periodontal protocol in place to like truly trust your hygienist to where they can make Mm -hmm. the recommendation. You make that official diagnosis of things and you're confident in what's being done and it's much more efficient on time. So doctor doesn't feel like they've got to go through and like, like, yes, they can look at it. But if I'm making a recommendation, they know I know the standard. They know we're, I'm going to recommend according to the standard. They can come in and confirm, and our job is a lot more efficient. I love that. I'm writing a couple notes because I had some ideas. <laughs> um, you know me. I'm not going to remember. So a couple things that you said that I'm pulling out is, one, I wanted to highlight the doctor piece because you said – um, you said the doctor can trust their hygiene team, which is huge. Like that is the the foundation of a team is that trust level. So I think that's huge. And then I think I can flip that. My hygienist might love me for this. I'm going to flip that and say, when my doctors know our perio protocol and they're getting new patients and they're perio probing, because we know that they do that every time and they love to probe, they can help the hygiene department by following a protocol as well. Because I think one of the biggest fights I'm gonna call it one of the biggest upsets we've ever had and yeah like is when a hygienist gets a profi new patient right this new patient was seen on doctor's schedule they get a profi in their schedule and they're like are you kidding me the calculus is like you know flying out of the mouth at this point like they're like what are you thinking there's no way this is a profi this is clearly an SRP and so that there's this like doctor's like well I don't know do it and you're like well, guess what? We can't do a cleaning today, even though that's what you came in for. So I think it like will help the trust factor from hygiene too. If a doctor knows what the perio protocol is, so that they can then sufficiently diagnose the way their hygienist would. So I think that's a great calibration tool. And I thought about while you were saying that. So another thing I thought of, you said you had six hygienists. That's a lot. That's so many. That's so cool that you're able to, to do that and work in a practice like that. I love that you mentioned like you'll see somebody else's patient and think, oh my gosh, what happened? I love that. And I used to do that to my patients who didn't require a specific hygienist. When I was scheduling patients, I would try to mix them up, especially when we had a new hygienist on board, because that's your calibration tool. That's how we know how the other hygienists are doing, because we don't, we don't know. We have literally no idea what's coming and going unless the doctor's going in behind you like you're at school and checking your profies and nobody has time for that nor do we have desire um i don't even as a non-hygienist want to have that done so i would say like rochambeauing your your patients as much as you can giving them consistency right and as the consistency is within the appointment um the consistency is with the rest of the team making sure that they're feeling that they don't feel jostled but seeing how the other hygienists are doing and then 
calibrating back to the perio protocol. So those were two things that I thought of and I was like, oh my gosh, you are so smart, Britt. So one question I have for you is, and especially because you had, you know, you, you had this giant practice um, with so many hygienists and I know you've implemented, I know hygiene is, is top of mind for you always. So within your practices, you've consulted, you've implemented perio protocols a ton. So who, who do you think, um, what's your opinion? Who should be making these perio protocols for the team and how should they be doing it? I really like to see doctors and hygiene come together um, and build this protocol together. Yeah. And some really important pieces to make sure that you have in your protocol are going to be like your philosophy to treating periodontal um, disease, right? So if our philosophy is like, great, we're always going to try to treat them here first and then refer them somewhere else if needed, or like, we're always going to be proactive. Like we want to, you know, take care of perio as soon as possible. Like whatever your philosophy is, it's very much going to be doctor driven, hygiene driven, like build that together. So you've got an overall idea of what you're wanting and then mm-hmm. build out your standards, right? If there are pocket depths, recession, like give the specific guidelines of if you see these things, then it will be this treatment and all the pieces of that treatment that are included, right? So if that appointment and they're coming in for like SRP, like what qualifies them for an SRP, what amount of time, what all are we doing during that appointment? Um, And so that you're all on the same page. And then a really important piece of this protocol that's always a fun one uh, to have the discussion and build is what if patients refuse periodontal therapy or mm-hmm. scaling and root planning, right? So what are we going to do as an office in that situation? How do we want to handle those patients? Mm-hmm. Um, and also like, what's our point where we're going to refer? Like where we are not going to see them here. Like we just need to refer them directly to somewhere else. Those are really important things. And they're kind of like the tough, the like conversation you don't want to have, but guess what? You're going to yeah. end up with those patients. And it's a lot less fun in the moment to try to figure out how to deal with it. If we know ahead of time, your life is much easier. Totally. I love that. That was beautiful. Beautiful. So I think like those were completely actionable steps. And if you guys missed any of those pieces of what that perio perio protocol should be, rewind this. It's very simple. (laughs) Rewind this, slow it down, write it down, um, because she literally just gave you the how-to on building that protocol. So action items um, that I've got for you guys, we talked a lot about this prayer protocol. You understand the importance, you understand who can use it, um, and now who can make it. So I would say doctors and hygiene, make um, an appointment, build an appointment into your schedule. I'm sorry, a meeting, build a meeting into your schedule where you guys can build out this protocol together. It is incredibly important. Doctors, I implore upon you to have your hygiene department a part of this. Um, It will go much better. It will be used. (laughs) It will be so smooth. So doctors and hygiene, get a meeting together, build out this protocol. Britt just gave you all of the pieces of it. Some some big pieces that I took away, uh, philosophy, that's huge. And you guys should all agree on the philosophy. And then your standards, she broke down those standards for you. Again, rewind this, be specific. When are you going to refer all of those pieces? Um, Another protocol to build into it. And I would say this is even an actionable protocol that you can build into your perio protocol, but the whole practice needs to be aware because oftentimes front office will get the phone call to cancel SRP or we'll be calling to uh, follow up and on scheduled treatment. We have to have these conversations as well. So what if your patient refuses your periodontal therapy? What does that protocol look like? So build out your periodontal protocol with your hygiene and doctor teams, and then what to do if a, if a patient refuses, and then train your team on it. All of the clinicians should know how to utilize your perio protocol, all of your front office and maybe even dental assistants, especially hygiene and and, uh, clinical doctors should know how to do the refusal as well. So those are your action items. I think this was huge. That was so tactical, Britt. I love it. I love your details. (laughs) You know that it was incredibly tactical. Um, So you guys, Britt, thank you. First of all, thank you so much. I knew this was like, this was your jam. So I appreciate you. One tip, because I know how we hygienists could be that we love our details and we definitely have opinions about our protocols, is before you go into that meeting to build this out, honestly, I'd have everybody like go write out what you think that is. So like, what's your philosophy, like come with an idea to the meeting instead of starting from Mm -hmm. scratch. So like, what's your philosophy? What should, you know, how should we treat like certain scenarios, pocket depths, recession, bleeding, inflammation, like what should we do for that treatment? And what do we think our protocol should be when it comes to those people who are refusing periodontal therapy? Um, And I think if you guys come into that meeting at that starting off point, you'll make a lot more progress. For sure. 
I totally, I love that. Good job. Good job. All right, guys, you have the tools. We have the tips. You have the tools. Um, go implement this. Go get started and let us know how it goes. We'd love to hear from you. You know, you can reach us at hello at the dentalateam.com. So if you've got questions, if you've got comments, if you've got things that have worked for you or let us know how this protocol goes for you, please let us know. And also never forget to drop a five-star review. We want to hear from you. And I tell you guys all the time, there are people who read through those reviews and they get tips and they get tricks from you uh, based on what you say. And then they also get a little glimpse into what this podcast was all about. So leave us a review, send us an email if you need to, and we cannot wait to catch up with you next time. And that wraps it up for another episode of the Dental Aid Team Podcast. Thank you so much for listening and we'll talk to you next time.